Job, chapter 3, verse 26. You know, people say that I'm uh, careful. I'd like to think that I am. We, we have this uh, gate where we keep the kids in the yard and out of the driveway. And last night there were a couple of them were over. I said, go close the gate. They closed the gate. Yeah, I like to think I'm careful. I went to put a dish away. I chipped one of the wife's dishes. I put it in there. It, it, it hit it hard enough, and a chip came off on the floor. I said, I broke one of your dishes. It's the one with the milkmaid on it and the, and the cow. Oh, well. But she, she looked cross only for a moment. And she didn't take my head off. <laughs> if it was 35 years ago, there may have been death in the house. <laughs> it was 40 years ago. It could have been a little bit way back then. We've come, we've, we've come a long way, baby, to get to where we got to today. Amen. We've come a long way, baby. <clears throat> Job 3, verse 26. And we will begin there. We're going to get started. I only got three pages. Uh, it's a very simple message. Uh, it's called uh, Looking for the Rainbow. <coughs> we'll get started here. And uh, it's not even 11.30 yet. Let's not pay attention to the uh, coo not cuckoo clock, grandfather clock. I want to start collecting clocks. I have seven clocks in the house now. They're all synchronized. They all bing bong at the same time. Coo -coo. And bong. We saw one in a movie that instead of a pendulum going like this, it went up and down. Anybody ever see a clock like that? It was the coolest thing. I want to, I want to, I want to find that. And then there was this miniature one that was just going to beat the band. You know, that's in these old movies. You know, we, we don't... You know what? We don't really watch the movie so much as we watch we watch the set and look at the set and see what is gone and missing today. It's just that the set today is the streets of San Francisco, you know. They just take a camera and start rolling it. Anyway, let's get going here. Father, uh, bless the message. I don't know if I already prayed, but it's worth praying over again. Bless it. Use it for your glory, Father, as only you're able to do now. In Christ's name I pray, amen. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. What the verse uh, meant was, it means this, I, I was not in safety. In other words, Job wasn't laid back on the, on the hammock. By the way, Zach, did you get your hammock up? I'm requiring that for you for by the end of tomorrow. Tall man. Do you know where the hammock is? Short man. You know where it is? Between the three of you and Wilhelm, let's get that hammock up. They do make a thing for it. I got, I got the kid a hammock. So you got enough trees out there. Find a place to hang it up and, and go sit in it. And I'll go lay down. And if you don't want it, bring it back to my house. Anyway, but you get that hammock up. He was, Job wasn't laying around in a hammock, sipping ice and sweet tea under a, uh, one of those south of the border palmetto trees or whatever you call it. Neither had I rest. He was, he was busy looking to make sure everything was going to be safe. <clears throat> Neither was I quiet. He, 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 was, he, he made sure he made sure the door was locked. He, ma he, he made sure everything was was a okay. Everything was going to be okay. Yet trouble came, <coughs> and, and trouble can come. Safety, rest, and quiet. Job was on guard. He was he was on guard. Job lived right. <coughs> he did his best and made sure those around him lived right. He was uh, afraid his kids weren't in the temple or going. Uh, it was wasn't in church. It doesn't say church. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. He he prayed and he took care of business for his God and for his kids. Made sure everything was right. Job five uh, verses six and seven. Uh, by the way, we're all, we're going to pull the full four verses. 
uh, you're already, uh, five verses, you're already at one, we're gonna to go to four verses today. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground, the Bible says, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Well, what ends when you die? Uh, what, 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 do, what do they say? Uh, taxes and what else? Oh, two things are for sure, death and taxes. And taxes don't end, they, they even tax you after you're dead, right? The death tax. And fly, as the sparks fly uh, uh, upward, the source of your trouble is not the dust of the ground, but it is the world, the flesh, and the devil. You're going to have trouble all the days of your life with the world, the flesh, and the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And everybody here, I'm expecting you to know these verses, to have heard these verses over and over again. That the whole world lieth in wickedness. In wickedness. And we're experiencing that. Just watch the news, man. It's just a, it's just a wicked place. A fallen nature and a fallen cre creation is Genesis 3. A man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So I thought I'd add something to this, this message that really doesn't have a lot to do with this message. Many times, I, I think people that uh, know us or are associated with us, think that everything is just hunky, uh, by the way, this has never been said. They think it's been hunky-dory for the wife and I. It's just been one hunky-dory time. And I'm, I'm moving around now. So if you want to play Zoom time, you can. it's just been one hunky-dory time. And uh, we've never had any trouble. We, we, we've had serious, this is long before we got saved, serious problems. Very serious. Don't get mad at me. You get mad at me after service. Very serious problems. We got married. Uh, we were a year into this. A year into this. Just a hair over a year. We, we had our honeymoon. We had a second honeymoon. I know I brought up the second honeymoon once. We went to Niagara Falls. It was the worst time I think I ever had in my life. I can't think of another worse time. It, it, it was it was awful. And uh, uh, we had an incident happen. There was a girl in the street. The wife doesn't remember this. Girl was running in the street at the car. An older girl. That real that shook me up. But her and I uh, are, are between her and I. We just had a awful awful time. You know. We didn't always get it wrong. I mean, it was awful. It was a, it was a nightmare. And I had, I had good reasons. Bible says this, Proverbs 27, verse 6. I, I didn't add this. It says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. So sometimes things have to be said. Right? But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful, always being sweet and kind. Doesn't mean you, you, you might be the devil himself doing that. But faithful are the wounds of the friend. So uh, we were a year into this. We uh, uh, a year and just a smidgen, and we were going we were going to see an older man, an older woman, right here in the middle of town. So we went and saw the older man, the older woman. I, I was okay. I, I was fine. Saw the older man and the older woman. And the wife uh, and saw the older man and the older woman. I was in the car. She came running out. Had the tears just streaming down her face. Just, and she gets in the car and says, Oh! And she, I said, What happened? What happened? Oh! And she was just blowing her eyeballs out. She Oh! He said this to me. Oh! She was just hysterical, hysterical. 
we went home, we were still in an apartment. She was just hysterical. And after that, 95% of our, our problems all went bye-bye. Because sometimes, sometimes faithful are the wounds of a friend. And this was no friend. It was an older man, an older woman. And sometimes things just had to be said. And almost all of our problems went away. We, we had made a problem. Gone. Now, let's get started. We learn about life by living it. If you were to look at 2 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there, chapter 1, verse 4. Those who don't live life will never minister to those that do. You're going through things so that you're able to minister to somebody else. Amen? Amen. Those who don't live life will never minister to those that do. Between bills and your health and relationships and loneliness... Unemployment, un unemployment, marital problems. Uh, folks, I'm not changing the message. It's right here. Marital problems. We did this back in 04. Homework, girl problems, boy problems, the raising of children. Disappointments are his appointments. You got to have disappointments in, in life, and those are his appointments. Paul had more trouble in 10 years than most people will have in a lifetime. So, I heard this from a preacher once uh, in chapel. He, he said, stop looking at the fiery serpents. As it says in Numbers, stop looking, you're too busy looking at the fiery serpents and look unto Jesus. You know, it's kind of, it, it, but and eventually my wife and I got saved. I heard this from a preacher uh, out in Brunswick. He said, if this is the cross, here's the cross. Husband's way over there so far from Jesus. And then the wife is over there so far from Jesus. If just one of you come to the cross, just one, you got half of your problems are solved. You're, you're that much closer together. And if you both come to the cross, Right? Amen. That was a good illustration. I never forgot that illustration. Ninety-nine percent of all my illustrations I hear from somebody else. I don't make these things up. I, I heard that. I probably heard that 35 years ago. Never forgot it. Stop looking at the fiery serpents. Look to Jesus. Bible says this in the world, Jesus said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. Jesus promised us tribulation problems and there are only this is looking for the rainbow we're on page two we're, we're, we're going to be done with page two we're going to page three it's a three page sermon there are only three men in the bible that saw the rainbow only three men and i will liken it under the presence or the faithfulness of god and rainbow only shows up in the Bible four times. That's it. Four times does the rainbow show up. Sometimes it's called the bow. But it's the rainbow. Oh, the word bow shows up a lot. But it's a bow and arrow. We're not looking at that. We're looking at the, the rainbow. You know what you see there in the, in the sky. I have this down here, and I've got a bunch of verses down here. We're not going to look them up. We hunger for the bait. We imagine we could enjoy it. We, 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 we imagine we would enjoy it. And once you have it, you don't enjoy it. <laughs> so let's get started. Revelation 4.3. Turn there if you would. So we had this meet, we, we, we had this, my, my wife was in tears. Devastating. Almost all of our problems went away. And then several 
years later. The name was Hunky Dory. Even, but even when we were lost, these were, things were pretty good. But uh, she said, she, my wife said three, uh, she wants, I want a house, I want a car, and I want a baby. That's what I want. A house, a car, and a baby. That's what I want. And then I will be happy. We had a house. We had a brand new car, a beautiful beauty. Wouldn't you rather have one? <laughs> a house, a car, only us older ones know what that means. A house, a car, and we had a baby, and we were miserable. It wasn't until we had gotten saved. We got saved, and hey, man, we had another baby, another, I mean, my wife was just, she spent her whole life like this, right? Her whole life. So she had this uh, pregnant problem going on for a long time. <laughs> Revelation 4, verse 3. Revelation 4, verse 3. We know Revelation as the time of the great trouble coming, you know, the great tribulation coming. But he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. So what I'm trying to tell you is what the theme of the service is is look for God. God was there. In the rainbow, he's there. And we, we were just as happy as, as could be. We prayed together. We read our Bibles together. We were now doing homeschooling. We got turned into the authorities for it. You know, when the psychologist and the, and the school psychologist and the, and the main, main gear shows up at the, the door, short the police, you know, you know, you gotta do something. Homeschooling. We, uh, uh, we, oh, I call it posterior preaching. We did posterior preaching. Anybody know what posterior preaching is? Anybody know what posterior preaching is? The seat of education. The seat of education. Come here, Junior. <laughs> we used to do the spanking machine. I'm starting to do it with grandkids. Even the grandkids love it. We would line the kids up, and I'd go like this. All right, spanking machine. They come through, and I spank them as they crawl through. I mean, we we were having fun. You know what? You know what? Experience. We, we we did all kinds of stuff. I had a lawnmower for everybody in the family. I just spread the love around. We roller skated in the house. You could do a figure eight through four rooms in our house. The, the kids were roller skating. If, if it was time to get new carpet, they roller skated for, for the, a couple of days. We played football in the living room for the Nerf ball. I don't know how much the, the wife liked it, but the kids played football. We played ball tag with a, with a sock. They were all up, uh, they played ball tag. Uh, one day I said, boy, the kids need to go butterfly hunting. How are we gonna make it? I ripped the, I ripped the, I hate curtains. I ripped them off the, the windows. I said, let's make some, we made the butterfly nets. Kids were out there catching butterflies. We, we did all kinds of things. Uh, the foosball game. I had a ping pong table in the living room. <laughs> the kids would be playing ping pong in the living room. My wife was so uh, beat up with kids, she would tend to bleed. She spent two pregnancies on couches. She wore out at least two couches to the point where when we're done, this went in the trash. <laughs> The kids would wait on her. We knew a couple of women that came to help us. It, it, was, it, was, it was quite the time. But we didn't know that Eve was coming. But we were as happy as could be. I was working, trying to keep our head above, above uh, water. At the dinner table, we did English rules. And, oh, I know. I saw it in a movie. Big, huge table. 
maybe 30 officers. They invite the German. Their English rules was you only pass to the left. If you're on the right, you say pass the potatoes. The, the German couldn't figure it out. And the Englishman had to say, it was a, you know, they were all officers, all captains and colonels. We know we're set English rules. The potatoes would go to the left and go clockwise. It, it's, it, everything goes clockwise. If you didn't ask for it, you just keep passing it. And finally it ended up at, at, at the English rules. I mean, we would have fun. Now, now there's just two of you, <laughs> there's just two. You can only pass it to each other, you know? <laughs> right, that's what we can do now, pass it. But we did English rules. We did that. My wife was always the last to be served in the house so that her meal was hot. <laughs> you could not eat, my rule was, you could not eat until everybody was served and my wife was last. That way everybody cooperated. They got the food on the, on the plates, but you couldn't eat until she was served, right? We played the napkin in your lap. If you if you, you if your napkin wasn't in your lap, what did you have to do? Push-ups. Oh, you're close. Jumping jacks. Jumping jacks. You remember <laughs> you, you remember this. Jumping jacks. So you, you have to do 25 jumping jacks. <laughs> if if you didn't have your napkin in your lap, make up your own fun. Buster would jump up clap his hands, the first couple of days, he would collapse on the floor, almost in tears. <laughs> Every time he'd jump up, one clap, down on the floor, as if he do your jump. We had a Mennonite come over, he was clever. <clears throat> he ate with us and we told them the rules. Napkin in your lap, if it's not in there, 25 jumping jacks. He got two napkins, put one in his lap, and he left the other up there. All the kids caught him. 25 jumping jacks, he pulled out the napkin <laughs> in his lap. Can't you have fun? I'm sure Jesus had fun. She would blow it. 25 jumping jacks, they would catch her. And I would say to her, to the kids, I said, nope, she's excused from jumping jacks. Tammy and Missy, they would, Tammy would go, <gasps> mom's going to have a baby! And they would run upstairs and mark it on the calendar. It means when mom's going to have another baby, she's excused from doing the jumping jacks. I mean, we just had a ball. We would go to dinner. I mean, we had no Christmas tree. I, I'm, I'm a Scrooge. No Christmas tree. We would go to dinner. Tammy was the ringleader, man. They would go out in the wintertime. They'd get this, this bale bush in there, this, this stick, set it up. I'd come home. There it is, it's all decorated. It's still dripping with ice and snow. <laughs> and I said, oh well. So I let him have it, you know. We didn't have TV for a summer. We couldn't find the kids. Where are the kids? Where are the kids? Where are the kids? Well, the TV was upstairs in a closet up by what well, we call the museum. Where are the kids? Tammy was the ringleader. Her and Missy beat down, and all the kids are crowded around the television. Tammy's Tuning it in, I said, "What? What are you doing?" You know, they, they got the television going. You know, we we just had a ball. We we had we had fun. And then, uh, so we uh, made up uh, some of these ideas. I got from a radio program on the almost Christian radio station. Uh, was called Woman to Woman to Woman, and she would have these suggestions. I said, "Boy, we're going to do that. We're going to do that." doing this and that. My kitchen's the way I want my kitchen, so we have fun. You have no idea what Noah and I, or Benji and I are talking about doing in there. We're, we're not talking. So anyway, uh, five of my kids are here. I got one, two, three, four, wait a minute. Oh, Ben's in there. And you can come. That'll make five. We'll leave Ben. Ben, you just stay in there. We would play a game called Bear. Oh my goodness, we have four points in, we're already quarter to the hour. We would play Bear, and then sometime we would play Snake in the Grass. 
So this game was snake and it's the same game. Anyway, come forward. Please come forward. Yeah, I told you. I already warned you ahead of time. I know. There's your Sunday school teacher. That includes you, too. Now remember, she's like this. She's, she's got this humongous thing. And, and by the way, the first one is always small. The second one's a little bigger. By the third, man, it's, 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 it's a dirigible. Yeah. So if we would play snake in the grass. Well, we'll play what we call bear. <laughs> there you go. All right. And you know, you know the game. One, two, three. And then you say it. Please, my dear. No, no. Get in here, Charles. One, you say. No, one, no, one. No, not a, not a thumb war. One, two, three, bear. One, two, three, bear. And then I have to go, and I have to go after them and tag them. And when I tag them, then they get down on their hands and knees, and they're running around until there's only one left. Then they become the bear. They become the bear. And then we would play every, every night like that. And snake in the grass, you would, you would crawl around. Oh, here's another game. Before we go back to bear. You, you want to do it too? Right. Amen. Come on, come on. Come on, let's play bear. Come on, Ella. Come on. You don't want to play? Oh, now, no, okay. She doesn't want to do it now. You got to play with more than one. Right. We'll play it later. Here was a game, we would sit around and we would pray. Before you go to bed, I would mix it up. The person on your left, ooh, this, this, this brought about daggers, man. The person on your left, you would say, the best thing I like about you. You have to say it about your brother or your sister. The best thing I like about me, look at the person they have to say it to, while they're saying, I hate you. <laughs> and they would have to say something. And they would get to the point where they're, now they're arranging their seating, you know? <laughs> and so then I would say, well, it's every other person or every third person to mix it up. The best thing I like about it. And they would have to say something nice. Then off to bed with them. Then I would cannonball. We would do the cannonball with the kids. I would put them under my arm and I would do the arsenic and old lace thing. What does the guy say when he runs up the uh, stairs? You know? Well, I would say that too. He would say charge. He would do the, uh, what, what's the name of that? Bully guy. Teddy Rosa. They go, charge! And I send, take him up, up to bed. Well, we played bear. Everything was going good. This one here, jumped over the edge of the couch. She leaped, jumped over the couch. She's out here, this was number, actually it was number nine. Say we have seven kids, well we had one in there, another one in there, and it was number nine. She leaps over the couch and she hurt herself. I said, oh, well within a day she started and bleeding. I said, well, you, you, better, you, better, you better sit down. Well, everything, everything got okay. Well, the next day we went to dinner. We went to dinner. See, everything, and God was there. Revelation 4, verse 3, before the great tribulation came, and God was there. And everything was swell. Turn, if you would, to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel chapter 1. This is when they're in captivity. Verses 27. And 28, and I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. 
as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness, the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So God was there when we were just having a good old time before the storm. But Ezekiel, now they're in the storm. And you know, God is there too. When everything seems like it's a total disaster. Well, she leaped. She, she leaped over the couch. And she was okay. We, we were, were going out to dinner in a day. We went, we went to the Brown Derby, the original Car War Derby. We went to the Brown Derby in Hudson. And uh, with the, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember. Paul and um, the Burns, almost. We went to the Brown Derby. So that's where, that's where we went. And so they, uh, the Burns, they went and got their salad. I, I got my salad. The wife said, man, I better go to the bathroom. Well, she went to the bathroom. And then uh, I don't know if it was a woman that came out or if it was Melissa. Well, we didn't know where she was. I think Melissa went to look for you. Now, my daughter is a friend of ours. She said, you better get in there. Your wife is on the floor, and she's bleeding all over the floor. She was on the floor, bleeding everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So they called it. I said, I, I get in there, and I go, well, for me, you know, Pastor got hit in the face with a golf club. He, he broke his face in four places. I said, get up. Come on. And I went back to work, and the light called me back and said, well, I think there's something more. And they took him to the emergency. He, he broke his face in four places. So, so I'm not real sympathetic that way, but oh, wow, he, he did. I didn't realize he broke it in four places. His job, he got smacked. Really fussy about the golf. Anyway, we call, uh, they called an ambulance. And so I'm in the women's washroom now. And where we went to church, it's, uh, you gotta know where we went to church at that time. It was a woman, uh, Jehovah's Witness, where you can't get a blood transfusion, a woman EMS driver, a woman, I was surrounded, a woman cop, and there was another, oh, and a woman preacher. She said, I'm a preacher. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm surrounded. A woman cop, a woman preacher, a woman EMS driver, and a woman uh, Jehovah's Witness. Now, now I, it's like I'm surrounded. Well, uh, anybody know who has the authority in that? I lose authority. Who has the authority? Anybody know what? It, it, the EMS driver. We dictate where you go, when you go, and it's, they have the civil authority. And you go to the nearest hospital, they took her right over to Akron General. Took her over there, she survived the night. She was real uncomfortable because they gave her a male nurse. I, I'm not into that either. Why would you want to be a male wor nurse working in the maternity ward? I mean, <laughs> Do you need male, versus, uh, male uh, nurses? Yes. One held me down while I got a spinal man. Now I know why they make, make those. You gotta have some muscles in there, you know? He put his arms around me like a big bear, and he said, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. <laughs> they moved her up to Deaconess the next day in the snow. She was there a week, and they said, well, we better move her. They moved her to, uh, What's the name of that house? There's five hospitals there. The university, but it's a McDonald House. They moved to McDonald House. And we got, we got this Jewish, uh, this Jewish, uh, uh, he had this cap on, this Jewish staff doctor. He was a young guy, and I kept saying, man, she was out there for uh, another whole week. I said, when is she, we, we've been at this for two weeks. I'm driving down to the circle. I know my way around real well there. 
because I got customers down there. So I know my way around the circle. I don't need to know how to get in there and out of there. As a little child, I'd be in there. And I'd say to that guy, when is she coming home? When is she coming home? Why can't she come home? Why can't she come home? Finally, he sat me down like the kisses of, uh, like the words of a friend and better than the kisses of an enemy, you know? The wounds of, finally, he sat me down and said, well, listen, I'm gonna level with you. Your wife can't come home. If she goes home uh, and she starts to bleed, she had placenta preview, your wife, before the ambulance will get there, she'll be dead. She'll be dead. I said, oh, I guess that's why she can't come home. So I accepted that. And they call, would call me down there. This is it. This is the big one. And I'd go down there for the big one. And then five or six hours into this, the big one didn't happen. Go home. I don't know. I did that three or four times. But finally, the big one came. And the one they were really worried because their blood thinned out. You know, just boom. Her blood thinned out. She's laying there in bed. You know. We got to know a lot of hospitals. She was in there for six weeks. <clears throat> so I decided this was the big one. And they said, well, we're taking the baby now. Well, I decided while I'm sitting there waiting, I may as well memorize the verse. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make it. I refuge it, my refuge till so these calamities be overpassed. Psalm 57, verse 1. I never forgot it. Decided to memorize the verse. And so they came in and they said, Well, uh, <clears throat> because they're going to be doing, the, oh, you're a nurse. They're going to be having to do other things in there. They said, Well, you know, we can't stop the bleeding. And, and because, uh, she was, everything was a C-section. So it hardens the uterus, it becomes like iron, it can't shut off level. Well, they said, well, we're gonna to have to remove the camshaft, we're gonna to have to take the, uh, uh, the connecting rod out, and, and I think we're gonna to have to, they did four lube jobs on her. Four, four complete transfusions, that's 28 blood products, 28 units. That just kept flowing through her, you know? It was like they forgot to put the drain plug in the, in the crankcase. Oh, and we, we, we got to take a piston out. And so they took a piston out, they took a connecting rod, they took the camshaft out. And they said, but we're going to leave this in. And I mean, they're, what are we going to leave in here? What are we going to take out? And they got her all doctored up and they come in and they say, she's okay. Everything's fine. Bleeding stop. We sewed her up. I mean, they had a seamstress in there. They had a seamstress in there. And then they say, well, we're going to move her over to intensive care, over to McDonald House, because she's at the upper. All the, uh, they're all connected there with tunnels. And I say, you head over there, back over to intensive care. I knew where, by now we know our way around. And I said, well, okay, I'll meet you over there. And I'm just booking away. And they're booking away. She's underground in the tunnels and I get in the waiting room and that's, that, that Jewish doctor called me out and you know, his little, what do you call that thing, a yarmulke or whatever you call it. And he said, and he knew we were praying and we, he knew we were Christians. And he said, if you're going to pray, you better pray now. He said, these are his words. He said, your wife died. Your wife died on the way over. And they told me, we're trying to revive her. We're trying to revive her. And I just, I totally broke down. I just totally broke down. And I said, I've got to make a phone call. I only got 20s and 50s and singles. And I got to make a phone call. Now, you millennials don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> but I gotta make a phone call. I don't have a quarter, and this is in Louisiana where you can use a nickel. I gotta have a quarter. There were no cell phones. You didn't have this, this thing. 
I said, I, I got to get money. And I knew where the cafeteria was. I had a dollar. I ran, I ran like the Dickens to that, that place to get, to get change. I'm running down the hallway. It was noon. A black girl stopped me. I kid you not, I'm not stretching the straight. She took me by the hand, and I had a dollar. She took the dollar out. She said, open your hand. I opened it up. Her hand was closed, and she went like this. And she put money in my hand. I had no idea what she did. And she said, there's a dollar. It happened just like that. I ran back upstairs. I got that money in there, and I called my house because there was a woman there watching the kids. I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even talk, and she was getting your wife. I said, she died. She's died. They're trying to revive her. And I said, you call everybody and pray. Call me and pray. And they were they were praying away. I get into that waiting room. I didn't care who saw. Well, we can't spread religion here. I didn't care who saw me. I was just wailing away, uncontrolled. And I was praying. I said, Lord, have mercy. I was just in there screaming and yelling. I was on my knees. And then another thing happened. The dreaded black man came. And this black guard came around my shoulder. And he said, I'm an elder at this church. I said, I'll pray with you. And he prayed with me. I was so thankful that he prayed with me. He prayed with me. And we went to a separate room. My preacher came. My preacher came down. She had called my preacher. He came down. And he talked about it. He talk, I don't know. He was talking about baseball or something. To try to get my mind off of it. We were in there for hours. Hours. And then the doctor came in and he said to me, I don't know what God you pray to, but he heard your prayers. He heard your prayers. I was so thankful. I got to go in there. Preacher got to go in there with me. We went to see my wife after 28, 28 units. You know what you look like? You know how much that? Well, you know how much that is. Her face was like, anybody ever see the elephant man? It was like the elephant man. It was enormous. It's like I didn't even recognize her. And she had the, she was conscious. They had to open her up. The wound was open. Because now if you open it up, it has to stay open. Uh, and, and the thing was in there. And she was trying to, well, she, she survived. I don't know, it was a few days later that that, that had come. But she lived. And it's a subject I can't, I cannot talk about. This is the fourth time I've ever talked about it. And privately, I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. She lived, I don't even know where my notes are. Right there. She lived. But you know what? That taught me. No matter how bad it is, as it was in Ezekiel chapter 1, God was there. God was there before the trouble, before the storm, and God was there during the storm. God was there during the storm. You got any storms coming up? God is there before the storm, and God will be there after the storm. Genesis chapter 9. Ah, where the rainbow is brought up. Genesis 9. Boy, and if I forgot some stuff, honey, I'm sorry. It was a wild time, man. We were six, six weeks in. You know, what kind of bills you, drink, you you pull up in six weeks? By the way, the baby lived. 
two weeks. It was technically number nine. We say it was number eight. And in talking to other people here, said, well, that's what you know. Who knows it could have been 12? Who knows? Baby lived two weeks. And they were moving, uh, what do you call where the babies are? In, uh, in the, they were, in the, the what? The what unit? The Nick unit, what, what, whatever that is. They were moving into a new location. Ours was the last one in there. And it started to turn black. And they said, well, you know, when you turn black like that, that's very painful. So we had to make a decision. It's time to pull the plug. We pulled the plug. That baby lived six more hours, man. Pumping away, man. That heart was going. Finally, the baby died. And I say this. The baby and mom went home the same day. Dorian came home to my house, and the baby went to heaven all the same day. Amen. So we got home. Now came the bills. I don't know if it was 125 for each one. That's back in the day. It could have been 60 for her, 60 for the baby. It could have been 100. Either way, I can't pay that. We'd get this bill. You got to pay it. What did I tell you? Genesis chapter 9, verse 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token. It shall be, it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. So the rainbow shows up again after the flood. For us, the flood was over and the rainbow showed up. It shows me that God will be there before the trouble, during the trouble, and after the trouble. Well, tr trouble was still, the trouble was over, but I got these bills. I'd get a bill, I swear, it would be, oh, what are we gonna do about the bill? The next day, the next day, we would get the answer. And they said, well, we reviewed your case and we paid them. And we waived it. And so she was off the hook. We still had to pay for the baby. So we got the, the bad news. You got to pay for the baby 120000 I swear it was within the next day. Now, you know the mail was functioning, so it's not quite how it, but that's how the news came. It would be the next day. Oh, well, we we had a board meeting. They had, the, they had these meetings, by the way. And we decided to pay the bill. All those bills got paid. Amen. Amen. God was there after the trouble. Amen. Revelation 10. Revelation 10. This is the fourth and the last. We preached long enough to be Revelation 10, verse 1 and verse 6. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud. And it says, A rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Verse 6, And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. So what's the moral of the story? God is there before the trouble. God is there during the trouble. And God will be there after the trouble. One day, when the bow showed up, he said there'll be no more time. That one day there'll be no more trouble. We'll be there and all trouble will cease. Shake hands before leaving. No, communion. Oh yes, thank you. God will never fail you. Okay, our, our communion. Hold on just a minute.
Just, just a moment. Go ahead. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come. Preaching tonight, 6 o'clock. 